Hey y'all and welcome back or if you're new around here, hello and welcome. My name is Katie Marie and I like to play with makeup and on my videos or in my videos on my channel, we do a lot of get ready with me type of videos where it's all raw, unedited, uncut. So if you like that type of thing, then I hope you stick around and check out this video because I have a ton of new products to try out that have been piling up and I want to sit down and do a good old fashioned trying new makeup with you guys. I have from Alter Ego, I'm going to try the eyeshadow palette that they sent me. Um, also have some lip products and mascara. I have a mascara from Pat McGrath. That sounds fancy. I want to try. I have some products from Pixie as well as uh, what is this? Uh, oh my goodness. Can I think the Smashbox? Sorry. Smashbox sent me their uh, new primer and their updated foundation that I'm super excited to try and maybe a concealer in here. I forget if I can I don't think I have a concealer, uh, a lip oil. Oh, I already put on lip oil, shoot. Well, there was a lip oil here as well from Lauren's. A lot of these products also came to me from Ipsy. They send me their Ipsy bags, the glam bags, the boxy charms, and the icon bags, I think they're called now. Um, I get those, so I picked out kind of a bunch of products to do a full face of the things that I was interested in. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. But before we do dive in, I do wanna share that this video is sponsored by Ana Luisa. So you're gonna see a little bit of editing here because. I do want to put some overlays over the screen so you guys can see as I talk about Ana Luisa. I am wearing Ana Luisa's uh, necklace here that says Mama and I always have their earrings in my ear. If you are brand new to Ana Luisa, they are a very earth conscious type of brand. They're a smaller batch type of brand uh, when it comes to jewelry where they do small batches of their jewelry. So they never have an overwhelming excess or keep styles in stock forever. They have a very uh, small regimented type of schedule where they put new ones out. And then oftentimes uh, with uh, the batches after they stock it for a while, once it's gone, it's gone and they release new stuff every season. That way they're not, like I said, having a ton of of products constantly, you know, pumping them out. They kind of try to keep it more manageable. They did send me some of their newer pieces. I forget if I've shown you this before, but they come in a really nice, sleek little box and they are climate neutral. They uh, have a little bit of information on here. You can uh, si uh, scan, sorry, the QR code. And then this is also, of course, recyclable. So really nice and compact. And then their pouches are absolutely beautiful. I like to keep my jewelry in the pouches. They're very nice quality and it helps preserve the jewelry as well. Though I will say in the two, two and a half years that I have owned uh, Ana Louise jewelry, they hold up extremely well. I've been very impressed. So the first one that I got, I was so excited for this one. This is named Hannah and it is engraved. Let me see if I can take the little um, protective coating off because I don't know if the glare is going to mess it up, but it has a beautiful flower. Um, what do you call it? Etched into, I'm like, I can't take it off right now. So I'm just going to show you guys and hopefully you guys can see. Uh, I'm going to have to turn down my ISO, but this has an etching and engraving of a flower in it. And if I can't show you that, I'll put in an overlay of me later, you know, doing a better job, getting up close, making sure it's not too bright. Let's see, next up I also have a, what I dropped, but this is called Sunny. Oh, this is also super pretty. It's a beautiful flower. And then it has like a flower, um, it's uh, etched out in the center as well. Beautiful silver. I've been really excited with all of the silver that Ana Luisa has been coming out with because they usually would do gold. I also got this, this is the May necklace. It has green and my birthstone, uh, let me make sure I focus it in. But um, I, uh, I was born in August, so my birthstone is a green peridot and I absolutely love having green. And then last but not least, I have this pair that is the Willow. Oh, I cannot wait to wear these. I love wearing stackable um, necklaces and these two are just gonna stack so beautifully, so daintily. All right, got my settings figured out again. Um, but yeah, Ana Luisa is gonna be running sales. Of course, we're working up to the holidays, so this is a great time to uh, uh, find a gift for a loved one, uh, especially during the sales. They're doing, gonna be doing a sale where it's up to 35% off your order depending on how much you get. So the more things you buy, the more percent percentage off so you can really save um, some money if you have a bunch of people in mind that you're shopping for. Now is a great time to check it out and get ahead of those holiday shoppings and those holiday lists, uh, gifts that you have to get. But yeah, I just wanted to shout out Ana Luisa really quick. I will leave their link down below so you can check them out. 
As I said, they're gonna be having really great sales as we lead up to the holidays for Black Friday and all that stuff. So definitely recommend checking them out. I'll have my link down below. And yeah, take advantage of their sales. If you've never purchased them from them before, I can highly recommend the quality. As I said, I've owned them for over two years. I forget exactly when I got my first pair of earrings from them, but they're my favorite. And I always have them in my ear, uh, in my ears. My daughter always has, has them in her ears. And they also are very great with sensitive ears. Both her and I cannot wear fake jewelry for long, especially her, they'll just swell up her ears. It's a mess, but these, she wears them every day in, you know, day and night, never takes them out for weeks on end, and they never bother her ears. So I really like that about them. And then they're just beautiful. They have very dainty everyday pieces. Then they have more statement jewelry or just longer, funner, you know, earrings for special occasions, that sort of thing. So I highly, highly recommend them. But yeah, thank you so much to Anna Louisa for sponsoring this portion of the video. And let's go ahead and segue right into putting on some makeup on this face. Okay, I already put on the uh, Kaleidos lip oil, but I also got a Lauren's lip oil, and with winter approaching, my lips are so dry, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on top. This is tinted pink, but honestly, when you put it on, you don't see any tint, but that is a really nice, thick type of oil that smells, smells lovely. That is really, really nice, I like that. Okay, let's go ahead and see, I think I had, Nope, that's that. I did not have an eyeshadow. I couldn't remember if I had an eyeshadow primer. Yes, I did. Alter Ego sent me their eyeshadow base. I'm gonna try this out. I'm only wearing makeup for half a day. So even if it's not super good like for a primer primer to really help your eye, eye look stay, it'll be fine. I wanna say this is though. Oh, I need to pluck my brows. They're looking a little crazy. Um, but anyway, we're gonna use it as, yeah, this looks like eyeshadow primer. It just says eyeshadow base. I guess that means a primer. I was thinking more of a colored base, I guess, when I read eyeshadow base, but this is kind of like a barely there. Doesn't really give any, maybe a minute bit of color correction, but mostly just a, in my opinion, a, uh, a lightly tinted eyeshadow primer. So I'm gonna blend this in, and then let's go ahead and get started. I've been going back and forth in my head about which palette to do. So this is the Sakura, I think, eyeshadow palette is how you pronounce it. It's really pretty brown and green. You know, the green kind of captures my attention. It's very, very springy, but I want to see how much depth I could get with it, and I feel like I could do a really fun look with it. But then I also opened up this, which is the Artemis palette. I feel like they've been, you know, this was one of the first palettes I feel like they launched with, and I remember, you know, drooling over it for so long, and uh, they sent it to me as well in this package, and I'm very tempted. However, the more I look at it, there's like only one one or two actually true, maybe three, mattes. There's this matte, this matte, and this matte. Everything else that's kind of matte-ish is actually more of a, a creamy consistency. It's like a creamy cream to powder. It's very interesting. So I don't know if I'm in the mood to play around with different formulas and textures. <laughs> so I keep going back and forth, but I think I'm gonna hold this for another video. If you wanna see me use this in a video, let me know and I'm sure I can pull it in in the future, but I feel like just doing this palette, which I feel like is a little unusual for me, but I want to do this palette, and I'm also going to use the Farrah brushes. I've gotten several Farrah brushes in um, Odin's Eye, or Odin's Eye, oh my gosh, Ipsy. I don't know where Odin's Eye came from, in Ipsy boxes, and I really do like them. This is the shadowing brush. It doesn't have a number. We're going to go into Grove, which is the darkest green, darkest shade, honestly. Yeah, the brown's pretty dark, but I feel like this is still darker. Okay, like I said, it's more of a springtime type of palette. I want to say it came out in the spring. Don't quote me that uh, on that, though, because my memory is really bad these days. But that's what it kind of seems like. But let's go ahead and just pop that on. It's very light. I think I'm going to take a little bit of that brown and mix it up because I need more intensity. So I'm going to go into Plum. Honestly, these two browns are, like, super... Actually, let me go in with a little bit of green, and then I'll do that just so I don't mix too much of my brush, but those two browns are very, very similar. Um, I don't know if there's much difference. This, actually, the more I'm using this, this seems like one of those cream to powder. It's very creamy looking. It's not sparkly or even, um, is there a shine? I don't really see much of a shine like a satin. It's just more of a creamy texture. It's very interesting. Let's go into Plum, and I'm going to go... Just top it right and keep it mostly in the outer edge. This has more of a uh, sheen to it, kind of like a, um, what, uh, not a shimmer, a, um, a satin type of sheen. So very, very delicate, but just a little bit. 
I think it looks good, but I feel like I lost all the green, so that's probably my fault. I'm gonna go back on with that first green shade, gonna pack it back on there, and then we'll move on and see if we can recapture the green on this outer corner, because that's kind of what I was going for. I'm going to take, where'd it go? This shade, or this brush, the E25 from Sigma. I'm gonna go into Sky, and then if I need to go lighter, I'll do right next to it and do Pale. But we're gonna start with this and see about blending this out. Ooh, very nice. I've been wanting to try Alter Ego, right? Alter Ego, yeah. Alter Ego for forever. Ever since they kind of launched, was it last year? I can't even remember, but I just haven't got around to it. And they reached out asking if they could send me a package. And I was really intrigued about this palette that they launched around the time when they asked. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's try it out. And then I just, of course, life. I got busy, it took me a while to actually try this. I feel like this has been sitting here waiting to be tried for a little while. But uh, I'm gonna have to go back over with a little bit of green because I don't love how, I mean, I guess it's not terrible. It just needs a little fin finessing. This um, uh, pastels, I feel like, can do that where when you blend them over things, it almost like just puts a like a, a white cast to things, which I guess makes sense because they're pastels. But I just like to go back over and kind of smooth them out and make sure the shades that I'm blending them into are nice and vibrant and vivacious and all that. So I'm going to go back into Grove. Since this palette has been out for a while, I'd love to know if you got this palette and what you think about it. These cream shadows are throwing me off though because it's just such a different type of formula. I don't know. I was not expecting it. I wonder if they are best used with a finger, but you guys know me, especially with mattes, kind of outer edge. I don't like using my finger but we'll make it work. I think it'll be just fine. And then for the inner corner, I want to, um, or the inner half of this, I want to use, I was thinking of the browns, but I honestly think maybe the pinks would be fun. Actually, no, because I want to use that, that bright pink or the darker pink. I want to use that on the lid. So I don't want to put pink anywhere else just so that pink really has a chance to pop. So let's go ahead and do hazy and see how, it looks like a grungy brown, but I feel like when I use it, it's just gonna be a regular brown, so we'll see. Maybe I can add a little bit of pink if I need to, but this is on a Give Me Glow G327 brush. I love these little brushes. They are fantastic for getting right in there. The quality of these mattes as I'm working with them is pretty nice. They're not, I'm gonna go into Wilt actually, just to keep it nice and light. Um, it's pretty nice. It's nothing like mind-blowing. I'm gonna go back into hazy because I feel like I can't see wilt at all uh, Nothing mind-blowing or just like mm, I don't know rocking my socks off. How's that phrase go knocking my socks off? I think that's how it goes nothing to that level. It's just nice Definitely like when I'm using it and working with it. I'm thinking like okay nice drugstore type of Eyeshadow. It's not too chalky and dusty and it's more pigmented I feel like than some drugstores that I have tried back in the day I feel like it's been forever since I've purchased from the drugstore Mainly because they tend to stick to neutrals and you guys know me if you're if you're new around here I tend to like color so I feel like it's been a while since I've tried the drugstore But back when I did especially colorful eyeshadows dusty and chalky was a Theme you could run into unless you got a good palette with from a good brand I'm going to go back into Sky and dab over here. And I think this is going to be it for the uh, the the mattes. Yeah, they're not bad at all. Like, I hope I'm not saying that and you're going like, oh, okay, not good mattes. No, they're nice mattes. They're just a bit, I don't know, undertone, subdued? I don't know, just a little bit mm, soft. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. And maybe it is the palette because this is a very softly toned softly toned type of palette so maybe I shouldn't be expecting too much or maybe I am expecting too much from it with my critiques but I mean it's nice I feel like that blends nice the, that cream shadow on the outside just took a little bit of finessing I hope I'm in frame I feel like it's or in frame in focus I feel like it was a little while um, since the last time I focused it but let's go ahead and just take a little bit of what is this Pre Primero from all Alamar cosmetics the primer. It's a more of a tinted primer, so I feel like it's gonna help grab hold of those shimmers and also tint 
tinted if it's a little bit uh, sheer. But we're gonna put this on. I like it for these type of shimmers because it is a pretty sticky primer. So I tend to like to use it for shimmers and hence why I don't like to use it all over my leg because I feel like it can, depending on the formula of the mattes, cause issues blending mattes over top or just make them stick and stuff. So to be safe, I just use it on my lid. <sighs> okay, let's go into, I want to do cherry over most of this and then I think I'm going to take Radiant, this green, minty green on the inner half. I feel like that'd be a fun combo. Okay, nice and soft. Ooh, that's nice and pigmented. That went on really easy. This is a uh, e, E54 brush. <laughs> it's almost all worn off. That tells you how much I like this brush. This is a fantastic brush. I'm gonna take it almost all the way over, but stop in a little short. And then going in, you guys know I like to do that, no, I think I said new. You guys know I like to do that peekaboo color where the one in the very center is a different color and then the, the outside and the inside of my eyelid are the same color. I feel like that's just so fun. So that's what we're doing. This shimmer is lovely. It's got a nice, gentle, soft type of uh, shimmer to it, but definitely is there. It's not like a satin or anything or even it's a little bit more intense, I feel like, than some, you know, typical boring shimmers, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's got a little bit of some extra to it. I'm going to take Radiant now. I feel like this might just look white, but in the pan, it has a green shift to it. Let's see. I want it to be like a, a minty green. That's what I'm going for. We'll see. They have a darker green, but I feel like that's too dark. Fair right next to it. I feel like that one's too dark to put on the the inside here, but maybe we can mix the two because that is just looking white. It's very pretty, very intense. I'm going to tap into a little bit of that fair and tap it over. Oh, that's lighter than I thought. Or maybe it's because I mixed the two, who knows. But let me go back, I'm just, or go over, continue going over, and I'm just using that darker shimmer fair instead of that first one that I pointed out of the minty greens. This is the darker green. Yeah, that's definitely brighter. I'm going to go just into this one on my other side just to show you guys. So you can see, oh yeah, that's a lot. It looks darker in the pan, like by a long shot. And then you put it on your eyes and you're like, oh, that's nice and bright. Was not expecting that, but I like it. I'll take it for sure. So I'm going to go like that. And then I feel like at some point as I'm doing this, I see this line between the two colors that don't mix because they, they're not supposed to. And I'm like, oh no, I've ruined the look. But I just keep going back and forth and it eventually comes together and meshes nicely. So that's what I'm gonna do. Take a little bit more of that pink, tap it over. This is definitely gonna be a nice palette if you like a very soft type of just wash a color to your lid for sure. But as you can see, like if you really kind of go ham like I like to do with my colors, you can get a really nice, really nice look I feel like I like it for sure very very nice I like it for sure was that even proper English probably not but it is the problem when you're just trying to talk and make sure there's not too much dead space I feel like sometimes I say odd things or use weird words oh well okay this is pretty darn good I like how it looks let's go ahead and put um, a little bit more of that dark green grove in the outer corner just to make sure that pink is nice like just the outer corner and then once it's pretty much a clean brush I'll go up a little bit because I don't want to don't want to mess up too much with the blending but I do want to touch that pink or the shimmer whatever shimmer I used and just a bunch of back and forth until I'm happy per usual but yeah that is pretty like I said the, the mattes didn't blow me out of the water but those shimmers are definitely pretty I like them I'm gonna go ahead and use a liquid liner feel like I don't typically take the time, but I kind of want to take the time to do it today if I can find this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit. Maybe I don't, won't do a full wing liner because it takes so long. But, uh, oh, is this blue? Never mind, it is blue. I don't think that's going to work. This is from Estate. It came in an Ipsy. I did not realize it was a blue liquid liner. So, let me just take a touch of black yeah we'll do black just gonna take a little bit hopefully not take too much time and then I need to clean off my face and we're gonna move to uh, to do my face because that's the next step I always like to once I get this far in 
my eyes, I stop and I do my face and then the final step is like my brows um, and my mascara. Because if I do my mascara now, I notice I'll get like powder from my face powder into my mascara and it'll be, can often be tinted a little bit white or just powdery looking, so that's what I do. Kind of do a little bit here, do a little bit there, come back. I'm trying to keep this really small so I don't have to do a wing because sometimes if I do too big of a, a liner, I feel like it looks weird unless I do a wing. What do we think? I wish you guys could, wish you guys could share, but that's okay. I will go ahead and just do a tiny wing because I can't resist. So let's do right here. And it'll probably mess up really badly today because I'm on camera or it'll turn out fantastically because, I don't know, fantastically is a word, probably not. It'll turn out fantastic because I'm saying it's gonna be a mess. So obviously the, hmm, I just, I just messed it up a little bit. But obviously those are the only two scenarios. So, nothing groundbreaking there, Katie. All right, not too bad, not too bad. We're gonna just do a little, like, little tiny, tiny baby. When I smile, you won't even be able to tell that I have wings. Like, that's how little I'm doing. So hopefully not too bad. And not too, uh, not too bad with the, the dead space in this video when, when you just hear the static from the, uh, from the microphone. I tried to put some music in the background so it's not quite so loud when I stop talking and you can hear something nice but sometimes it just I feel like it's still too loud. You have to let me know if the music in the background of these videos are ever too loud because I worry about that but then I, I upload it and I'm like man maybe I did it too low like can you even hear it? Does it even matter that I put it in there? So you can absolutely let me let me know what you think. All right, there's always one eye that looks terrible and the other eye lo looks decent. This is my bad eye today. And that's okay, so we're gonna move on. I have a little bit of a um, mar my, my cellar water, is that how you call it? I'm gonna clean my face with this and then we're gonna move on to a little bit, I feel like that, oh, was, uh, I feel like this cotton round was a little dirty still because I just wiped it and either there was a lot of fallout I couldn't see or there was a ton of uh, sparkle left on this cotton round. Or not cotton round because it's fabric, but whatever this is. We're cotton round replacement. Okay, there's none on this side. Yeah, I think I just have a lot of fallout now that I'm actually looking at it. It's, it's a decent amount of a sparkle fallout. Lots of sparkle all over my face. This is why I like doing my face last because I can cover it. <laughs> okay, let's see. I want to make sure I don't forget anything that I need to try or that I want to try, I should say. So let me see. I'm going to put a little bit of primer. This is the Smooth and Blur from Smashbox, the photo finish. I haven't used this in for, oops, I needed to shake that up because it was a little separated from travel. I haven't used this in forever. Oh, yeah, I think the eyes turned out nice. Let's see, just a little bit. It's very liquidy. I, I feel like I remember this being... Um, thicker, but maybe, I mean, they did reformulate it, so maybe they made it be a little bit thinner. You'll have to tell me if you have that. Is it, like, thick? I thought it was, like, a gel, but this is much more of, like, liquid. Yeah, it can't hold its shape. I even shook it up thinking that maybe that was why, but no, it just can't hold its shape. It's going to be very smoothing. It feels like one of those silicone-y, pore-filling type of primers, but very, very liquidy, so it makes it easy to rub in everywhere. But that's nice. And then we're going to go into Pixi by Petra. This is their CC Crayon by Under Eye. I want to say it used to only come in a pot. Now it is in a stick form, which is definitely more my style. And I'm going to see how much it'll get rid of these under eyes. I don't feel like I have super dark circles, but they're there. Right here, I have deep set eyes. So even if I'm getting lots of rest, they're always just a little bit naturally dark there. So we'll just put a touch, get my Anise, what is this, Angled Concealer. I love this brush. It's like taking pillows to your under eyes. Maybe a little bit ridiculous, but you know, that blends nicely. I remember, who was it? Um, Emily Noel always talking about the pot version of this being like a great dupe for a higher end one of these. And um, I hated sticking my finger in a pot, so... 
I think I bought it and I eventually gave it to one of my sisters who was uh, more into taking the steps to conceal. I just I never have time and I'm, I guess, too lazy maybe. But anyway, I gave it to her and she really did like it. Okay, I'm going to actually do my foundation and then I'll do my concealer over top. That way that can have a few seconds to sit. I'm going to go into, I want to say this is, yeah, Makeup by Yolando. Um, the Flawless Brush. I thought it had a number to it. But this is the... Smashbox, oh, Smashbox, always on skin balancing foundation and hyaluronic acid and adaptogens. It looks like it might be a little bit dark, but I also got pretty dark over the summer. So when they ask for a shade, I hate, I hate trying to match my foundation shade on, especially online, like in person, at least I can, you know, put it on my skin or put it next to my face. This actually might work. But anyway, I did the best guess I could online with what I had you know, comparing on uh, the swatches online and whatnot. So let's see if it works. I think this actually might be perfect as long as it doesn't like oxidize crazy. This actually looks really nice, especially once I put powder on whatever color foundation I'm putting on usually gets a touch lighter. So yeah, that should be a good match. Yay, I was so worried. <laughs> so worried about that. I hate, I hate picking out colors when it comes to foundation because Without fail, no matter how hard I try, it's always at least a little too light or a little too dark, and I can't decide which way I prefer it to be, if it has to be one way. Because I used to say, well, as long as it's lighter, that way it just doesn't look crazy, um, you know, dark compared to the rest of my body. But then I just look like gauche like or like someone took, you know, when they used to take pictures back then with those um, powders that would make your face look white. That's what it makes me feel like sometimes. But then I feel like dark does not, look great either if you're a ton darker because it looks, I don't know, like you were at the beach too long type of dark. I don't know. Especially if like the your neck is lighter and then your head stops here. That's another thing. I should probably just get into the habit of going down my neck, but I never go down my neck. I have kids. I have a baby. She's always on me. She gets enough foundation on herself just rubbing against my face. I don't want it on my neck where she's always cuddling and whatnot. So anyway, I'll put a little under my chin. Not really on my neck, but that might help blend. I feel like my chin needs a little bit more. What do we think? I think that might be a good match, actually. And just talking about the formula of it, it's very thin, which is what I like. I like very, very skin-like foundations these days. I really don't like anything heavy. And even with my powders, I've been trying to go a lot softer with them so that they're not too heavy on my face, just a little bit of powder. I feel like that's really nice. Maybe a touch dark, I don't know. I'll have to see like after I get off the camera, that'll be the true test to see um, what it looks like in person and not under these lights. I'm putting on a little bit of the Maybelline Super Stay Active Wear Concealer. I don't, oh, 27 is the color. I just got a darker color because the one I've been using all summer is far too light and I don't like to have really bright under eyes. I like my under eyes just to be like a hair literally a hair darker than, or lighter, not darker, a hair lighter than my foundation because I just don't like it to be that brightening. I like, like I said, I like more light products for my face these days for sure. Don't really focus on covering any, you know, zits, imperfections, whatever. I just want kind of a smoothed out, um, what do you call it? Face. I don't want, not smooth, smoothed out in color because my face is so many shades lighter than the rest of my body. So I just want it kind of smoothed over and look more uniform with my foundation. And that's always my goal. And a little bit of concealing with the under eyes. I'm gonna take this um, LA, no LA, LYS. I got this in my Ipsy as well. A little while ago though, so I have been using it and I really do like it. It's a touch warm or maybe touch warmer than I feel like would be the perfect preference for me, but it works really well. I just use a little bit of it. And most days when I do this and I set with a powder, I just go. Honestly, it's not that warm. It's just, I don't know. I like cool tone when it comes to bronzing. So I wouldn't mind if it, for my preferences, if it was a little bit more um, cool tone. That's what I mean by a little too warm. But when it comes to the whole like makeup in general, I feel like bronzer is supposed to be a little bit warm. So I don't think it looks, I don't think it looks too warm. It's just me and my weird preferences, I guess you could say. I feel like I lost or forgot to put something around my face, whoopsie. Let me take this concealer right here. It was a little bit light. 
There we go. Mm, did I? Almost looks like I got, um, what is that called? When you put a little bit of mascara on the side. I might just have to pluck. That might just be a couple dark hairs that are popping through and making it look like a mascara smudge, which could literally be what it is because there's one over here that's annoying me. Maybe tonight I'll finally get around to pulling them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just mustache hair. Okay, let's keep going. I don't have any powders, but I love this Milani one. This is the Conceal and Perfect powder. It's beautiful. I'm gonna use this little brush. I use it mainly for my under eyes, but today, I'm like I said, I wanted to go very light with, <coughs> I just inhaled it, <coughs> with my powder. I'm gonna use this all over. I like the, what is it, the Maybelline Fit Me as well for a nice light powder, but that one is a little bit like super, a uh, few shades too light. So I like it on the days when I have a foundation that's too dark because it helps lighten it up. But today, I don't wanna, I don't wanna cover the color because I wanna kinda see. I think this is gonna be a good match. So I wanna, I wanna be able to see what that is. So just a light layer of powder to kinda set everything, but not too, uh, to be too heavy. All right, moving on. Let's see. I really like that Smashbox. I'll be curious to see where time. Let's move on to, actually before we do mascara, let's go ahead and just do my brows because I'm super lame and boring when it comes to my brows. Literally, if I can open this, just putting, I'm just putting, if I can show you, or if I could pull this out, I would show you, but I'm just putting this clear brow tint. Would you call that a tint? I don't even know. Come to me. I'm just tearing it open, but this is called the, uh, okay, stopped recording on me, but this is just called the brow tamer. Finally got it out. And it's really big. I remember that the last time they sent me one I used, I liked their product, but it was just a little bit of a large, large tip. But if you're just running it over, no color, so you don't have to worry about making a mess, it's honestly not that big a deal. It works good, and as long as it stays. If I remember correctly, it's a pretty strong gel because I think I remember comparing it to Benefit's um, gel brow tamer. Don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've tried this, but I think that's what I remember. I remember trying this years ago and uh, enjoying it. I'm going to take a little bit of that green. All right, let's go back to my under eyes. Man, I like inhaled some of that, not inhaled, but like sniffed up that powder. So now it's bothering my nose. I'm going to go into Grove and then we're going to take this darker sky and we're going to put that for my lower lash line. And I'm going to keep it super simple, super boring like I do. And I don't think I have any pencils, so I'll probably just use a black or a dark green, whichever one I find first out of my pencil drawer or my pencil, not drawer, um, cup holder. Let me go into sky. That was nice and pigmented. I like this little brush. It picks it up really well and deposits it very quickly. This is the Gimme Glow one. Gimme Glow is great little brushes, especially for the price if you're ever looking. They're not that expensive. Um, I'm gonna go into this one. This is, I think this is Sigma. It's all worn off, but I wanna say this is Sigma. Yes, it's a push-up. Oh, I love push-ups. I never have time to sharpen, so if it's a, not push-up, but a twist-up, that's the word I was looking for. I love twists up because don't have to worry about sharpening it. Okay, now let's move on to the mascara. I'm sorry if you don't like when I pull down my lid, but my eyes are like super weird about touching them, and uh, it just weirds me out, so it's hard for me to get close enough to put it in my waterline, so it's just quicker for me if I pull my lid down a little bit, and I promise I'm not pulling it too much. This is the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. That is a big old tube. Let's see, oh, before I do that though, welcome to my videos where I'm always all over the place. I have this Lash Booster Mascara in Blackest Black from Pixi. I forgot I like doing my lower lashes uh, first better because then I don't have to worry about making a mess when I'm doing my lower lashes with my upper lashes touching. But this, I remember having this years ago. Oh wait, no, this is different. Okay, I thought their lash booster had an itty bitty, teeny tiny, eensy, bincy, weensy, I don't know the words, mascara wand, but this is a regular size one. Oh, bummer. I got excited when I saw, well, I saw, uh, I just dropped a saw, lash booster mascara. Okay, I saw lash booster and I was like lower lash in my head, so that's my own fault. 
We're still gonna use this on my lower lashes. It's not impossibly large, but I was just really excited. Um, you'll have to let me know if you remember that one from Pixie. I haven't had it in forever. I should just pick it up because I loved it for my non-existent lower lashes, but it's literally the tiniest little, ah shoot, the tiniest little uh, mascara wand. It's a dupe for the It Cosmetics one, if you could remember that one. So I like that one. I like the It Cosmetics one too, but um, the It Cosmetics one was great, but it was expensive. So I like the, the Pixie for a good dupe. That went on nice. Got a little bit too much right in there. That went on nice. I liked it. It wasn't too large for the lower lash line, but let's go ahead and into this big guy. I might use a mixture of both just to make sure these, this doesn't clump up, clump up. So let's see what the Pat McGrath does. I'm a little scared with the size of this wand. It is huge. It reminds me of the Too Faced Cosmetics Better Than Sex Mascara. That's what it reminds me of just looking at it. I don't think it's as gloopy of a formula as the Too Faced one, so that's good. This is actually not that gloopy, so it's actually making it really easy to comb through and get it into my lashes without overdoing it. And I've never opened this bottle before, so a lot of the times um, mascaras, the first time you use it, is always a gloopy mess because it's at its wettest. But honestly, this isn't this isn't bad at all. This is very doable. I don't feel like I'm destroying my makeup look or clumping all my lashes together, so that's great. But also, I'll be curious to see the more I use it if it dries up too fast because it's starting out at such a nice formula. This is a, a more pricey brand. It's more of a luxury brand, so I would hope it wouldn't dry up too fast. But, I mean, that's something really only time will tell. If you've had this mascara or have tried it before, you have to let, let me know how you like it. Like I said, it's a Dark Star mascara. What do you think? Because it's looking really nice. Nothing... Um, I don't know, that's taking my breath away or doing something different for my lashes than the other mascaras that I have, that, like from the drugstore or indie brands. But it's definitely not a bad one, so that's good. I don't know, mascara is a hard one. I feel like there's very few that literally like take my breath away. I think the last one to do that would have to be the, um, what was it, that Benefit one. I'm blanking on it, but that one really did just surprise me on how much it did for my lashes. This, I mean, this side is looking really good. Let me go plump up this side a little bit more. I mean, this is a nice mascara. Not to say this isn't nice, but it's not, I don't know, throwing me for a loop or shocking me. Like, that's a nice I, uh, mascara application for sure. I got a cat hair on my nose, sorry. Um, That's a nice mascara application for sure. Where is it that... Oh, this is it. Um, Bad Gal Bang. That mascara, when that came out from Benefit, like my socks were blown off and in the next room type of thing. I was so impressed with that. That's a nice mascara. I will, I will say that. I like it. I really do like it. Let me go in and put a little bit of... Let's do that green that I didn't, that didn't really work out, the Radiant. We're going to do that for the inner corner. And pop it right in there. Yeah, this is definitely a lot... Brighter. That's something interesting. I feel like the colors, the shimmers, are showing up a lot brighter than they look in the pan. Even that pink looks a whole lot deeper. Maybe it won't come across on camera, but that pink looks a lot deeper than what's on my lid. And the same for the greens. Like this, this one I'm using for my inner corner, it's like might as well be silver. It's like that bright. And then that dark green next to it is kind of like what I anticipated the first one being. So it all worked out, but just an interesting uh, bit of information I always like to share. I have, there we go, had something in my eye. Another piece on my face. Uh, okay, let's finish this out with a little bit of lipstick. This is from Alter Ego Crush Number no. 6. I think it'll go with this look. It's like a purple. Ooh, that is a pretty, pretty tube. I should probably take off. Yeah, I'll take it off. I feel like it'll stick better because it, from what I understand, it's a matte liquid lipstick. I don't know if it dries down or it's just a liquid type of formula. So I figured I'll take it off just to be safe. That's almost too pinky for me. It'll be fine with this look, but definitely a little bit more pink than I prefer. Oh, that cat hair is still on my nose. I am going to go crazy. 
I thought I caught it off, but I feel it. Mm. Cat hairs, gotta love them. Okay, and when I say it's too light, I'm not saying that's a bad thing for the like the the lipstick for what it is, but just like looking at the box that it came in, like there's the color on the lid, and even looking at it in the tube, I feel like it looks like more of a mauvey type of pink. And then putting it on, it's like a bright mauve, I guess you could say. It's fine with this look. It's just a little bit pink, too pink for me. I typically don't wear these types of pinks anymore. I like a, a couple tones darker and a little bit more neutral, you know, kind of brown leaning. That's what I prefer. So this one, I didn't grab Jealousy because I was like, ooh, that is like a brown. It's probably, that is probably my preferred type of color, honestly. <laughs> it's nowhere near as dark. Oh yeah, that would have been a color that I like. Yeah. Honestly, for an everyday type of look, like with this or, you know, just hanging out the house, I would have wanted somewhere in between these. But for going out, definitely I would be grabbing this over this shade. This shade is just too pink for me. I will keep it, though, and I'm sure my daughter will love it. She loves wearing pink lipsticks on special occasions, and it is drying down a little bit. It's like one of those sticky type of dries down, but it's gonna... Yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, it's not dry completely yet because it has a little bit on the inside, but that's where it's wettest. If I wait another minute, it'll be dry, one of those that dry down and don't move. So that's nice. And I wonder, probably couldn't put anything on top just because I feel like it's going to mess with it. But uh, it's pretty comfortable. It's almost, it feels like there's nothing on my lips until I put my lips together and then they have that tacky ty type of uh, texture to them or stick to them. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I have, I have lipstick on. But just talking and whatnot. It feels like I have nothing on my lips, so that's nice. But yeah, that is gonna do it for this video. This is the look that we created with all of these new products. Overall, no duds, so that's nice. And as my foundation and everything's done, I feel like in person it doesn't, it looks like a good match. On camera, I feel like my face looks a shade too dark, but that could just be me. I'll see during the editing. And of course I'll see more when I go out and look in my in my vanity, look in the, uh, the, the car mirror, the one that flips down and you can look at, that's the true test. And then in pictures I'll be able to see as well. But I think I got a pretty good color. If it is too dark, it's like barely half a shade too dark. I feel like it's super, super close, but overall it was a fun mix of products that we tried out and I had fun doing it. I hope you guys had fun seeing me try on all these products. Let me know if you've tried any of them because I don't think any of them are like groundbreakingly new because I'm so late to this. So if you have any of these products already, let me know what you think about them down below in the comments. Uh, thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. If you want to uh, start shopping for any of your loved ones this season, right now this month is going to be a fantastic time to get some great deals on some great jewelry. Ugh, I blurred or slurred my words, sorry. Great deals on some great jewelry. So I will leave my link down below if you want to take advantage of their holiday sales. So with that said, that is going to do it for me. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye guys.